Hello and welcome to The Hearing, our music review show here on the channel. I'm John. And from Chicago's north side, I'm Scotto. And before we get to this week's album, we have some feedback. Yes, some feedback on The Hearing, which is unusual. Um, this is from my post on, on my personal Facebook account. Um, a couple of friends of mine, um, Rick Tallman, uh, said... Anthrax is probably the only big four band that even when they made a sound change to accommodate John Bush, the music was still good. And I would agree. Um, that period is very controversial, but um, it, it's still very solid, I think. I also pointed out that's probably because the guys who wrote everything were still in the band. Yeah. You know, they didn't leave. And uh, Dave Miller, um, husband of Jen Miller, Zombie Takeout fans will know who she is, um, also on my Facebook uh, post said, among the Living is in my top three favorite albums ever. I recently rediscovered it and rediscovered it and was blown away by how relevant it is today, even more than it was released. Just an amazing piece of music. It, it definitely holds up. Um, some of the vocals are, are a little dated 80s, you know, but Joey was amazing. On to this week's album, which is Age of Unreason by Bad Religion. Our first Bad Religion album will definitely be getting to more in the future. Um, Bad Religion is an American punk rock band known for their politically and socially conscious lyrics, their melodic sensibilities, and their extensive use of vocal harmonies. The band was formed in LA in 1980 by high school students, vocalist Greg Graffin, bassist Jay Bentley, drummer Jay, Jay Zizkout, and guitarist Mr. Brett Gerwitz. In 81, they released their eponymous debut EP on the newly formed Epitaph Records, which was and continues to be managed and owned by Mr. Brett. Uh, yes, Epitaph, um, Offspring fans know that one. Uh, anybody who knows the punk explosion, the pop punk explosion of the 90s knows Epitaph. Founded for Bad Religion. Um, yeah, see. Um, in the same I year. Think they did Faith No More as well. Oh, okay. The early for, Faith No More. For a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah they were founded for Bad Religion. Um, in the same year, the band began recording their first full length album, How Could Hell Be Any Worse? Uh, Bad Religion released their first six albums on Epitaph, including the very controversial Into the Unknown. Um, they did a prog album for their second album. I still haven't listened to that, but I don't know if I want to. Oh, keyboards. <laughs> I mean, it was still rock, but it was very prog, uh, a lot of keyboard solos. Um, <laughs> it is very controversial. I think it's amusing. Um, and it's not a bit, it's, it's, it's fun. It's interesting, but certainly not their best by any means. Um, um, and inclu also including uh, Suffer, their first album with guitarist uh, Greg Hetson as a member of the band. He had previously played a guitar solo on Hell Could Hell Be The Worse and uh, was listed as a band on their EP Back to the Known, which was their follow-up to Into the Unknown, basically an apology for Into the Unknown. <laughs> After their sixth album, 1992's, 1992's Generator, which saw uh, Feinstone, the drummer, being replaced by Bobby Shear. Uh, the band was signed to Atlantic, who released their next five albums, also in a very controversial period in the band's career. It was during this time that Mr. Brett left the band to focus on Epitaph, because this is when the Offspring were completely blowing up. Um, yeah, the, the Offspring, who were like obscenely dominant back in the day, in the late 90s, were on Epitaph, the record label founded for Bad Religion. That, I, that just kind of blows my mind. <laughs> Um, after 2002's The New America, um, which is the one album I can't listen to, I'll, I'll be honest about that. Um, they've That's returned funny about The Offspring. Um, I've never got into them, you know? I just never liked that whole pop sound that they were putting on. I generally don't like pop punk. I like a couple yet, of Offspring songs. There are so many people from the scene themselves that love them. <laughs> well, I mean, like they, you know, Jello Biafra, you know, as like, musicians, because I mean, I, from what I've I heard, they're really know. nice guys, but you know, they're good people, but yeah, musically, that's surprising. Um, I right. like a couple of songs. Um, after 2000, the new America, uh, they returned to Epitaph. Mr. Brett returned to the band. Uh, Bobby Shea left due to a shoulder injury being replaced by Brooks Wackerman. And they released their next six albums, which brings us to, Age of Unreason, it's uh, the 17th studio album by Bad Religion. Their first with guitarist Mike Dimkich, who replaced Greg Hetson, uh, and, and uh, drummer, um, uh, I don't know, 
I don't have his name, uh, Jamie Smith, uh, replacing Brooks Wackerman. It also marks their longest gap between studio albums. Uh, I was going to say, 17 studio albums, but their last one hasn't been released in six years. Yeah, uh, thir- 2013's True North was the last one. Um, Age of Unreason was released on May 3rd, not 2019, produced by Carlos de la Gar- Garza, who replaced the band's longtime producer, Joe Berezzi, and features Greg Graffin on lead vocals, Brett Gerwitz on guitar and background vocals, Brian Baker on guitar, possibly background vocals. Background vocals aren't listed on this album. I'm just assuming Gerwitz and Jay Bentley because they sang background on all of their previous albums. Yeah. Um, Brian Baker, guitar, but possibly background vocals. Mike Dimkish, guitar, Jay Bentley, bass and background vocals. Jimmy Miller on drums with additional musicians, Gavin Caswell on slide guitar, and Felicia Rosolo on background vocals. Reminder, I don't edit any songs into our episodes for copyright reasons, but down in the description and on our blogs, uh, johnandscotto.com, you'll find links to find Age of Unreason on Spotify and YouTube. On to the tracks, starting with track one, Chaos From Within. Now, all the songs on the album were co-written by uh, Greg Raffin and uh, Mr. Brett, which is unusual because they usually, even up until True North, wrote separately. You had the Graffin songs and the Gerwitz songs, and they okay. sounded very different. Um, I've always preferred the, the Graffin songs. I can't believe True North is that long ago. Yeah, six years ago, um, which yeah, doesn't feel that long. Well, like they did the Christmas album last. Uh, yeah, and so that True was North... like less than a year. Well, True North was their first full studio album of original material. Yeah. Um, uh, the Christmas album is considered a compilation album. Um, okay. They, it was a lot of Christmas covers, and then they threw American Jesus on there. The most people hate. Um, so it's not cons- it's uh, uh, when I f- said studio album, I meant studio album of original new material. Would you say American Jesus is like the band's big hitter? Uh, that would be sorry. struck a nerve or American Jesus, one of those two. Oh well, no, or possibly um, Stranger Than Fiction. I think Stranger Than Fiction was one of my biggest in terms of the media, hmm. you know, commercial success. Um, so yeah, it's unusual that they wrote most of the album together, um, but this song is practically a mission statement for the band's return. <laughs> You've got the blast beats, the harmonies, the articulate, intelligent sociopolitical lyrics. I call it's, it the BR beat, you know? I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. It, they, they, it, and you'll hear it throughout the album, yeah, too. Yeah. It's just one beat. I hear it throughout their career. What am I talking right. about? But this is classic bad religion. Yeah. Going back to, and I, I listened to a lot of the earlier stuff. I actually marathoned a lot of bad religion uh, last night. Um, How could hell be any worse? Was it a little different? They hadn't found their sound yet. They were kind of generic hardcore, but their third album suffer was when they found the sound and it, it was this. Um, And they, they've held, held on to it all of this time. Um, like a thinking man's ACDC. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And this song is very Greg Gaffin. Yeah. Um, I will say the new members fit in very seamlessly. It sounds like classic bad religion. Nothing sounds that different. I think the drums sound a little deeper. Like maybe Jamie Miller tunes a little lower. Like I think once you've got Gerwitz and, and Graffin, it's, you know. It's bad religion. It's bad religion. And, <laughs> yeah, and, there's two together. Ben, I would say Bentley too, because he's the one aside from um into the unknown. I think he's been on all of them. Um Graffin's the only one who's been on every album because he had a different rhythm section on Into the Unknown. Gerwitz was on that one. Um I think uh, Bentley's been on everything else. And he's an important part of their sound too. Uh, much like Frank Bello is an important part of Anthrax, uh Bentley's bass playing is a very important part of their sound. Um, kind of hard to comment on the music on a punk album because punk is so song oriented. <laughs> well, especially Bad Religion because it is it is really just it's more about the lyrics than anything else. Yeah. it's more about the the vocals too on a Bad Religion. Yeah, album. Um, that's really all I have to say about um, yeah. Bad Religion. It's just classic Bad Religion kicks the album off perfectly. On to track two, My Sanity. Now, this is something they've done a couple of times. It's a slow vocal over a fast song. Right. It like it has the same drum beat as any other Bad Religion song, I think. It's a classic, just hardcore blast beat. But he sings it like a ballad. Yeah. Um, it, it's very similar to Sorrow from Process of Belief. Uh, um, I mean, now the line, of course, sometimes there's no sane reason for optimism yeah. is probably worth the price of admission just for that line. <laughs> 
My favorite is um, there comes a time when you look up to the sky and ask, do, why do my favorite songs always make me cry? Because <laughs> I've always had a, a weakness for sad songs. Is that is that a line out of this? Yeah, it's it's in the first verse. Um, oh wow, That's this good one too. actually feels a bit country. A little, yeah, I could see uh, where you get that. And Graf and solo albums um, kind of lean into folk and country a little bit, yeah. which is surprising for a punk singer. Um, so he's got that side to him. Um, uh, I think the slide is a really nice touch. Um, haven't heard that since Recipe for Hate. I should point out, I've been a Bad Religion fan since Recipe for Hate and I think, 93. I have all of their albums, uh, you know, so I, I'm well-versed in the band. Um, I've been a casual fan. I've seen, I saw them live maybe, oh, I think it was Empire Strikes First. Okay. Like, it was maybe 15 years and ago. About. The return of the proper Bad Religion sound after the... Um, the I think Oldenic that's years. what it was. I think it was Empire Strikes mm -hmm. First. Um, but overall, back to my sanity, I would say, and this is, you know, qualified as it's a bad religion song, so it's amazing. This is probably, in my opinion, the weakest on the album. Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's, I, I don't know if I'd put it as my strongest, but I wouldn't say it's okay. the, the weakest. I mean, it's just I, a, it just, uh, that slower vocal thing, it worked beautifully on Sorrow. It just doesn't work for me as well on this one. Um, I think lyrically that this is one of the, probably one of the strongest okay. lyrically. Yeah, on the lyrically, album. they're all brilliant um, yeah. um actually I, I have this uh on in part of the next song but i'll get to it now um the first time i heard this album obviously the night it was released as soon as it was up on itunes uh or not yeah on itunes um and, and spotify i don't remember which i went to first i think it was itunes um i didn't have the lyrics and i listened to it and a lot of my reaction was kind of whose side are you on you know <laughs> what is that supposed to mean <laughs> soon there's, no as question, I, there's no question as to what side well, bad religion as soon as i found the lyrics <laughs> i was i went through them and i was like okay yeah there's really nothing to complain about here um and i'll get to the line that that triggered that initially um uh track three do the paranoid style this is very much a gerwitz song and his stuff always has it takes a minute to grow on me it's not as melodic as, as um graph and stuff um but I love the grating, uh, tense, fast guitar part in the chorus. It's just this, this two notes on a guitar that just grates on you. Like, this is the stuff that influenced System of a Down and why I love System of a Down yeah, so yeah, much. Yeah. Um, he points out in the lyrics that both sides are paranoid. Yeah. And I think that's where I, where I kind of got, got put me on my heels a bit. Like, no, we're not. <laughs> you know, it, takes a minute, it took me a minute because there, there are some hard truths on this one. Yeah. Even for the left. Um, this one took out a, took a while to grow on me. Ended up being one of my favorites. It's just grating and intense. And oh, uh, it's good, yeah. yeah. And I think, if I'm hearing correctly, Graffin gives us a Michael Jackson-style shemong right before the guitar solo. Really? I'll have to listen again for that. Because I don't don't think I picked that up. Because it doesn't seem... It's not come on. It, it sounds distinctly like Shemon, Like Michael Jackson-style. Um, and I've heard it, I think... I did it a handful of times because this was released before the album. This yeah. is one of the lead off singles. On to track four, The Approach. Beginning of this one really reminds me of the island from True North. Um, but it, it gets into, you know, a kind of a slower song. This is their mid tempo side. Um, okay. You know, yeah. they, do, they frequently do slower songs. I mean, I thought it was very, you know, typical bad religion you know <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's it's a trick they pull where the beginning of the verse is slow and then they pick up okay yeah um they did this on cease from uh, the gray race as well um love how gritty um graffin's voice is as he gets older his voice is actually improving with age which is unusual for singers and and uh, that's good i think it is good for singing but kind of, it kind of gets a little tired when he's like railing, you know, when okay. he's like really like trying to, uh, you know, and not on this track, but there's, yeah. you know, he, he shouts, he gets a little shouty at points. Tr there's, there's times where he's just the old man shouting at the clouds, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, yeah. that, that meme. Um, <laughs> but I love the low end of his voice on this one. Um, and I think because he's never been a high singer, he's never been a tenor, you know, screamer type. Right. He's aged well. Um, love the melody on this one. Maybe his best vocal on the album. Um, might be my headphones, but I think the vocal was a little low in the mix. Um, but I love the line, is the enemy hiding in your conscience? Can forgiveness light the way? 
uh, basically talking about both sides reconciling. Yeah. Um, and just reconciling as a country. This album is very about the current political situation. Of course, US. it's bad religion. Yeah. Um, it, it really takes some shots at Trump directly. Um, uh, on to track five, Lose Your Head. This is another one of my favorites. Um, love the groove. It's it's that mid-tempo groove that you find in Faith Alone or Streets of America. I feel like they, they're... They... They're challenging us when they do like you know, it's yeah. I guess it is mid tempo for bad religion. It's a that's it's down really, tempo, of course. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's straight up mid tempo. Um, faith alone, you know, on on their um against the grain. They're what everybody, what most people would say is their best album has a song that is pretty much the same uh, tempo. I I wouldn't say this is the sh- my my pick for strongest, but I think it would be a make a great single. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm surprised it wasn't released um beforehand. Um, by the way, how should we bury our dead? I, oh. I mean, the uh, the melody is like a, a sped up George Harrison song, you know? Yeah, kind of. I can hear that. Um, speaking of the lyrics, I loved um, despite dark, darker tendencies, I've always had a strong bias to exist. As, as somebody who <laughs> suffered with anxiety and depression, I love that line. Um, and also, self pity is always a case of mistaken identity. <laughs> Probably my favorite thing Graffin has ever written. One of my favorite things Graffin has ever written. Um, that's a classic Graffin line. Um, I love his lyrics. Um, but there was one line that kind of bugged me at first. Um, the verse you just referenced. Um, yeah. Religion who needs it. Um, but then again, how do we bury our dead is the opening part. I thought um, it was, by the way, how should, how should we bury our dead? By, by the way, how should we bury our dead? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the, the, that section ends with maybe we'd all benefit from some epistemic humility. <laughs> As a star, staunch raving atheist, that one was a bit of a kick in the head, but I eventually came to realize he's right. It's a little weird coming from a band named Bad Religion. <laughs> they have flat out admitted that the name and the logo, which is a cross with a circle and slash, <laughs> were created just to piss people off. Of course. And it they, were in, they were in high school. They wanted to piss people off. <laughs> um, they're not all atheists, actually. Um, um, Graffin describes well, obviously himself as not. A, they did a fucking album of Christmas carols. Um, Graffin describes himself as a naturalist. Um, Brian Baker is a um, is an atheist. Um, I think Gerwitz has said he's a provisional deist. And a what? Uh, a provisional deist. Oh, I thought you said professional deist. No, provisional. Like, How's we'll get a job doing that? A provision. He's a provisional deist. I think it, it's it's one of the guitar players. I think it was um yeah. might, might be Hudson. I think it was Gerwitz. Uh, and the ben- union. He get benefits. And, <laughs> and Bentley has said he has supernatural beliefs, um, or has described himself as a faith based individual. So definitely not an atheist. Um. Um. But yeah, so they're not all what they you know. In that in that camp, um, Graffin writes a lot the of the Church lyrics. of the Loch Ness Monster. Mm-hmm. I love the the harmonies and the chorus on the and the bridge on this one. They're better than usual, which is something to say for Bad Religion, right? Because harmonies are their thing. Yeah, um, that's really uh, the lyrics and the harmonies are really what set them apart. It's two uh, things you don't associate with each other. It's a punk rock song mm-hmm. with harmonies, and there are a lot of <laughs> crazy harmonies in just... this review where I comment on the mo- the melodies. But they're not pop punk. Like right. no one ever call them pop punk. No, no, you would not call them pop. But punk. they're very melodic, which is again something that sets them apart from other hardcore bands. Yeah. Um, also, love the last line. Soon we'll all be dead. Yeah. <laughs> which is a theme Graffin returns to periodically. Yeah. Um, on the track six, end of history. Another one of my favorites. Uh, this is covered. A- Ring of Fire opening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is co-written by Graffin Gerwitz, Carlos de Garza, the producer, and the uh, Carlos de Garza, the producer. Great groove. Um, loved the line. Halcyon days are not a thing. Nostalgia is an excuse for stupidity. For stupidity, yeah. I, like that's what I've been trying to say for years. <laughs> and they took a clear shot at Trump, um, a reference to cre- presidents that puts kids put presidents that put kids in cages. I think his vocals. This is where I think his vocals fall uh, short. Here, where you know he gets his old man yelling at the class. Gets a little. He shouts a bit in the bridge. Yeah, um, and there's some nice reverb like, there. You know, I don't think I don't know if the other side will ever be stopped when you have like this. You know, is like the the banner carrier. You mm-hmm. know, I don't know. Um, the, 
melody of the chorus is interesting. It's very new wave. They, yeah. they leaned a little into they leaned into some other genres on this one. Uh, the track seven, Age of Unreason. Um, great groove, classic BR, great harmonies of the pre-chorus, love the melody. It's really just a classic bad religion song. I really yeah. don't have a lot of notes on it. I'm curious as to what he's singing about in this one. Um, it's basically just the state we've gotten to now where nobody listens to reason and it's all mm-hmm. just polarized and emotion based. But he was singing about a person. I don't know. You know, I don't have any lyrics about... put it in my notes. Yeah, it was like some it was about a person from a long time ago who, you know, had reason and enlightenment and well, yeah, it's we talking about it how away. we how we've you know we had an age of enlightenment and how we've frittered all of that away over time and almost entered another dark ages. Um, on to track eight, candidate, a rare acoustic opening. Um, they've done some bonus tracks and albums that were acoustic. Um, Chronophobia, one of my absolute favorite songs of theirs. Um, but it's rare to hear an acoustic on a you know regular album track. Um, the beginning reminds me of uh, "Come Join Us" from um, Grey Race. Um, which is about a cult leader. Um, this, of course, is about a candidate um, asking for your vote. Um, picks up to another loud mid-tempo groove. Love the line, I salute an empty flag of ancient tribalism and trust me, nobody <laughs> cares. Yeah, you know, it sounds like they agree with me. Everything's hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> That's Graffin. And your yeah. words frequently. Um, also, another direct shot at Trump. Um, a celebrity and my name is competition. Like, they're clearly talking about Trump in this song. On to track nine, Faces of Grief, co-written by Baker, Graffin, and Gerwitz. This is my favorite. Um, well, yeah, it's another one of those... Um... Just absolutely brutal groove. Um, <laughs> love how grating and uh, the intense it is. Um, it, yeah, just old, good old-fashioned Smash Mouth punk. You know, yeah, not uh, Smash Mouth the band. but no, I mean... no, Yeah, aggressive punk, great gang <laughs> yeah. vocals. And they don't do gang vocals a lot, but they, they pull them off beautifully on this one. There's this half-step vocal harmony. It just goes up in half-steps. That is really unsettling. Um, and the song's lo- only a minute. Minute I mean... and change. Uh, love the spoken part. Amidst darkness, let us vow to ensure her light will be remembered. Like the to this, of the, the Statue of Liberty, of course. To these guys, like a three-minute song is like a long song yeah, yeah. for them. <laughs> yeah. um, I think this is the first uh, first song in a long time that has had a, a song that's exceeded five minutes. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, that line, amidst, your dark, amidst darkness, let us bow to ensure her light will be remembered. It took me a while to figure that one out. It's the Statue of Liberty, mm. the torch. Um, also loved the entire second verse. Um, radicalized evangelicals awash in primate chemicals, their <laughs> shiny fangs for all to see, a rictus of misogyny, Obse- obeisance to a maniac, uh, the sleering, uh, the slave, slaver, uh, this, ah, can't speak today, um, the slave, slavering, slavering or slavering? I don't, um, uh, lackeys stay on track in this, dem- in democracy's darkest hour, a doctor bears to speak truth to power. Now, is that an, a practicing doctor or is that a reference to Graffin? Because he has a doctorate. Oh, oh, hey, Graffin has a doctorate. Has a doctorate in evolutionary biology. Oh, um, oh, wow. He's a, it, there's this thing with punk singers um, with, with, who are very well educated. Um, <laughs> Dexter from Offspring has Offspring, a doctorate yeah. as well. Um, Saved, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also a short bass solo at the end, and I'm all for bass solos. <laughs> I can't. I cannot remember how that word is pronounced. Slavering or slavering? Um, let me know. Um, anyway, on to track ten, old regime. Now they're just really brutal groove, great melodies uh, and harmonies in the chorus. Yeah, but, this I is, mean this, this is classic. What they call the oohs and ahs of O Z I N apostrophe A A H S. Um, love the bridge. Um, an unabated tendency to tyranny is still in place, and the ancient nobility's complexion differs just in name. Now you could start by saying this one's like another typical, you know, BR song with the the beat and everything, but this is such a solid example of a BR song yeah, this with is, the guitar yeah. and the harmonies. Right. Like if you had to pick one of the typical BR songs on this album, right. this would probably be it. Mm-hmm. And it's about how the old aristocracy of you know hundreds of years ago has come back. Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 
On to track 11, Big Black Dog. This has an interesting groove because it's kind of glam. Yes, it's almost straight up metal or hard rock. Yeah. Uh, you and almost this expect is... to hear the cowbell. That's all it's missing. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's just a great droning single note guitar part. There's, and by single note, I don't mean like one note at a time. I mean, it literally just plays one note. It's a drone yeah. throughout the, the bridge, the verses. Um, loved set the second verse. One man's grace is another man's bullet. Bullshit beams from the bully pulpit. No regrets <laughs> for the bounty they've taken. The pig must, pigs must feed on their rasher of bacon. And so there's like, it's weird yeah. to hear them do this kind of song, you know, like the metal, you know, just the almost like you said, glam almost. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's this dog imitation before the solo. It's not an actual dog. <laughs> I think it's just one of the band members impersonating yeah. a dog. And at the end, there's there's this repeated line at the end, and the vocals starts off with Graffin, and then band come, you know, the regular background vocals come in, and then there it sounds like there are kids singing with them. It just builds and builds. I love that. It was an interesting surprise. On to track 12, Downfall. Now, this one goes almost new wave. Yeah, it almost sounds like they're covering Pearl Jam. Oh, yeah, <laughs> or alternative, yeah. It has a very Pearl Jam kind of feel yeah, to true, it. true, true. Um, but I love the groove. Um, great melody. Um, all the cor- melody on the chorus reminds me of another song. I can't place it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, and it's kind of derivative musically, but it's fun. They um, they add a, like a little keyboard effect, in it, but I think this would be my pick for for strongest because it just okay. I mean it. It is very interesting for to hear them doing this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love the second verse. Uh, no one around here can contain their fears, so contend with false hope to soothe their fear. To soothe the fear, faith is king, while truth is on the lamb. Disenfran- disenfranchised scientists be damned. As a science geek, that just hits yeah. so hard. Yeah. On to track 13, Since Now. Um, these last two songs were just kind of there for me. I mean, yeah. they're good, they're pleasant, but they're kind of unremarkable. And yeah, you're, you're at the typical kind of weak. VR sound. Yeah. But they're kind of weakest for me, well, among the weakest, uh, just because, yeah, there's just nothing really all that notable. Nice groove, um, like the muted guitar. Um, the first verse is good. Um, since when is it just a fallacy of tainted memory to believe that things were really all right? Since when were the qualities of wisdom and knowledge equivalent to mere facts online? Since when were the virtues of character and content more than just a popularity game? Since when was the protocol of rational judgment not the same as blame? Um, there were some. There was some of the lyrics do get a little bit back in my day, but ultimately, <laughs> it's just a really good, solid song. Um, yeah, it's it's you get the typical BR sound yeah, yeah. again, and, and on to the last one, the last track, what tomorrow brings, um, feels a bit country, <laughs> almost. It, it's Graffin has that country influence. Um, great harmonies on the verse, great melody on the chorus. Um, I love how, and this is in general general comment, how he can fit so many syllables into <laughs> a, into the rhythm, because the man uses big words. All right, and that it's... is from someone. If you've been watching this for a while, you know I have a considerable vocabulary. Um, I, I, bad religion. I think this is when I fell in love with them, and I don't remember the song or the word. But this is the only band that has ever sent me to the dictionary. <laughs> They've made me look up words. It's, System of a Down took that too. You know, I mean, they they could rap. You know, mandatory minimum sentences. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just yeah. <laughs> and I never noticed the influence, but yeah, I think System was pretty influenced by VR. Oh, very much so. It, it, it became very obvious when they, with like the last album they did in 05. Uh-huh. But. And that's it for um, Age of Reason. Would you recommend it? Did you hear? I, I didn't get a chance to hear it. There's like a hidden track. Oh, yes, yes. Um, and there's another there's a, bonus see, track. There's a too. hidden track, which is uh, The Kids Are All Right. Um, and a bonus track, um, oh, um, Profane Rights of Man. Both were released before the album as singles. And so they're on they Spotify. Have, like it, are, are they? Oh, they're just not on the album. They're on not on the album on Spotify, so I didn't include them. They are released as singles beforehand. Um, I think they were released a bit before the album was announced. Um, so, yeah, um, that's why I was kind of tempted to get the CD when I found that. I have it on iTunes. Um, yeah. 
But I, I ultimately didn't get it because they're on Spotify. And, and I like Profane Rights of Man. It's a classic Bad Religion song. Um, Kids Are Alt-Right is okay. Lyrically, it's great. Uh, musically, it's a bit of a departure. Um, but yeah, I would recommend this. I mean, you just good harmonies with punk rock, like real mm-hmm. punk rock. Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely recommend it. I, I guess I've been a big band, VR fan since the early 90s. When I first saw the video for Struck a Nerve on MTV, probably still my favorite Bad Religion song, in, in no small part due to a uh, guest appearance by Jeanette Napolitano from Concrete Blonde. <laughs> we have to review some Concrete Blonde soon. And, uh, you know, they, uh, they're they not afraid to experiment either, which is always a plus. Yeah. Too. And I, I think all but a couple other albums are amazing. Um, like I said, not a fan of New America. Um, um, Into the <laughs> Unknown is 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 questionable. Um, I just, I just, for, okay, you said Concrete Blonde, because sometimes I confuse that with Four Non Blonde. No, 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 Concrete Blonde, Jeanette <laughs> Napolitano. Um, still in Hollywood. That, that, yeah. yeah, okay, then, yes, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> Yeah, want to be very clear on that. Um, for for non blondes, I'm taking off my headset and I'm walking <laughs> out of here. I mean, I mean, even Joey was still a good song. Um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, like I said, all but aside from, in my opinion, New America and Into the Unknown, all of Bad Religion songs are, or albums are amazing. They're all I, I recommend all of them. In, this one is no exception. And they um, they kicked ass live too. I mean, it was 15 years ago, but they, yeah. I mean. They're worth checking out. Oh yeah, um, I think it was like in a small place too. It was like uh, the Starland Ballroom up in wow, uh, nice. up in um, Sayreville. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was still in Jersey when I saw. Them. I've never seen them live, but I've seen plenty of you know video of them live. Yeah. And they sound amazing. They sound like the record. Yes, which is an unusual yes, they thing. Do. For them. They do. Which for those the harmonies they're pulling off. Yeah, yeah. that is fucking hard. While playing hardcore. <laughs> And singing yes. those harmonies. Yeah, it, so it is something to see. And it's only two of them singing harmonies, usually. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, one of the guitar players, and, or, and, and you know, when Brett wasn't with them, um, it was Baker um, and Bentley, the, Jay Bentley, the bass player. But it sounds just as full as the record. Um, anyway, that is it for Age of Unreason. Until next time, when we'll be reviewing Atlantis de More by the police. I wanted something that would kind of scale us down a bit <laughs> um and they they're very police were very punk influenced so yeah and it's their first album so it, it's a nice transition oh, we're doing that into metric oh, nice. um, and then into yannicka's debut album um don't wait till tomorrow i think it's a nice kind of gradual um step down to basically pop rock which is what yannicka are yeah um, yeah so it's metric um, until then, of course, always remember, never forget, where, wherever you go in life, there you there are. There you are. Why can't I speak this week? <laughs>